All right, let us begin our Mass Effect. And as any good RPG game will, we will start by creating a character. Information requested. I'm classified. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection. Thank you, JT Shep, for the follow. John, Jane, I'm gonna be a new ID. I'm gonna make a custom mail. Please log in to access your profile. Our name is Thor. So, data corruption detected. Please reconstruct profile. What did you look Confirm like again? Service history. All right. So, this is our 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 background info. This actually has no impact on the game other than a couple of role playing and dialogue changes that will show up. Um it will actually do nothing other than that. So we've got Spacer. Both your parents were in the Alliance military. Your childhood was spent on ships and stations as they transferred from posting to posting, never staying in one location for more than a few years. Following in your parents' footsteps, you enlisted at the age of 18. Colonist. You were born and raised on Mindor, a small border colony in the Attican Traverse. When you were 16, slavers raided Mindor, slaughtering your family and friends. You were saved by a passing Alliance patrol, and you enlisted with the military a few years later. And Earthborn, you were an orphan raised on the streets of the great megatropolises covering Earth. You escaped the life of petty crime and underworld gangs by enlisting with the Alliance military when you turned 18. Alright, I'm going to take Colonist. Let's get some some trauma in our background. Confirm <laughs> psychological profile. Now we got Soul Survivor. During your service, a mission you were on went horribly wrong. Trapped in an extreme survival situation, you had to overcome physical torments and psychological stresses that would have broken most people. You survived while all those around you fell, and now you are alone are left, are left to tell the tale. War Hero. Early in your military career, you found yourself facing an overwhelming enemy force. You risked your own life to save your fellow soldiers and defeat the enemy despite the impossible odds. Your bravery and heroism have earned you medals and recognition from the Alliance fleet. And finally, Ruthless. Throughout your military career, you have held fast to one basic rule. Get the job done. You've been called cold, calculating, and brutal. Your reputation for ruthless efficiency makes your fellow soldiers wary of you. But when failure is not an option, the military always goes to you first. Personally, I kind of like War Hero. War Hero is, like, a good background for Shepard. Unless you're going for Renegade Shepard, then Ruthless works. And Soul Survivor can work for either or, honestly. <clears throat> Always like the Spacer one, maybe because you have an actual family. If I recall, being a Spacer does actually get you a conversation or two with your family. Here and there. Uh, anyway, we'll go with War Hero. I'm a hero. Um, I did it. Alright, now it's time to pick our class. Uh, I've played Mass Effect a couple of times. Literally two. So I've played two classes, and the other four I've never touched. So, uh, the information I give may not be particularly accurate, but... Soldier. Combat specialist ideal for the front lines of a firefight. Soldiers have improved health, can specialize in the use of all weapon types, start with the ability to wear medium armor, and can train in the use of heavy armor. This is your very generic I have guns character. Would you like to shoot gun? You can shoot all the gun with this character. Um, probably pretty solid in any game. I don't I don't think it would ever be bad because guns are pretty darn good throughout Mass Effect. They're not bad at all. Uh engineer. Engineers are tech specialists. Using the holographic Omni tool, they can decrypt security systems, repair or modify technical equipment, disrupt enemy weapons and shields, or heal their squad. Engineers can only wear light armor, and they specialize in pistols. This is kind of a bit of a support class. Um, this is uh, this is Tali's class, and um, I assume I've never done it myself. But I assume this class would be kind of hard to play as the main character um, because you're your AI partners, while they're decent, they're not particularly the smartest, the brightest bulbs in the bag, you know? <laughs> so trying to be a, like what seems to be mostly support or almost pure support seems really difficult. Adept. This is what we will be. Adepts are biotic specialists. 
Though, through upgradable implants, you can use biotic powers to lift or throw objects, shield the squad, and disable or destroy enemies. Adepts can only wear light armor, and they specialize in pistols. Would you like to be a space wizard? Be an adept. You're a space wizard. <laughs> uh, personally, I want to be a space wizard. Infiltrator. Infiltrator is the other class I have tried. Uh, combined combat and tech abilities to specialize in killing or disabling enemies at long range. Infiltrators are trained to use Omni tools focusing on decryption and offensive abilities rather than healing. They can specialize in pistols or sniper rifles and wear medium armor. The reason I tried this is sniper rifles are fun. Uh, and I can attest that Infiltrator's pretty solid. Because sniper rifles are good. Then we've got Sentinel. They combine biotic and tech abilities. Typically, they use biotic abilities and advanced healing skills to defend allies, though they can also disrupt opponents with biotic or tech attacks. They are more efficient at tech and biotic than any other classes, but at the expense of combat. Sentinels can only wear light armor and receive no specialized weapon training. So this is your other support class, but with a little bit of magic thrown in, as opposed to Engineer, which has no magic. Um, again, I assume Sentinel, like Engineer, is probably hard to make work, because you're mostly going to rely on your allies to do things in terms of uh, uh, being good in combat. And then Vanguard. Vanguards are biotic warriors. They combine biotics and weapons to take down opponents and are especially deadly at short range. They specialize in pistols and shotguns and wear medium armor. This is your, uh, this is your, I want to be a soldier that runs into the middle of the battlefield, but I also have some magic. It's, uh, it's what the Krogans basically are. Big health, big shields, big shotgun. Simple, right? Um, my chat actually begged me not to play Vanguard. Apparently, it's probably the most popular class. So they've probably seen it a bit too often. <laughs> so, fair enough. Anyway, I'm going to be an adept. I personally don't know if I've ever seen anyone else play as an adept. Um, I have seen Vanguard play through before. I have seen Soldier play through before. And I have seen Infiltrator play through before. Never seen anyone touch Engineer, Adept, or Sentinel before. So, let's be a space wizard. Confirm facial identification. Now, let's uh let's make ourselves look weird. Let's make ourselves look as close to me as possible, but also very much not like me because they can't get the hair right. This is back in that age where long hair didn't exist for anyone for the most part at least. Okay, let's pick our face. Big head. Yeah, you know what? Big head is pretty much my face. I got a big fucking head. Skin tone. Pretty pale. That's me. Oh, complexion. This is basically how old you look, how how wrinkly you are and stuff. Smooth as a baby's butt. Thick neck. Cheek gaunt. Oh, that's that. Okay, yeah. Ears? That kind of normal ears. <laughs> it's fine. Eyes. And eye shapes do we got? Also military haircuts. Yeah, uh th like in this in this age of video games, with the exception of Japan, because they don't give a fuck about hair clipping through stuff. In order to avoid hair clipping through things and try and get a sense of realism, a lot of Western studios made sure that everybody had either really short hair or if they had long hair, quote unquote, it would be very much like up in a ponytail or up in some way, shape or form where the hair isn't going to have any hair physics and movement to it or as little as possible in order to avoid any possibility of hair clipping. Oh, man, crazy eyes.
I'm gonna stare at people with my big ol' eyes. I'd say around there looks good. Around there looks good. What the hell is I depth doing? I don't know, just keep it where it is. Oh boy, red eyes. For clear eye for red eyes, get clear eyes. Sure, her hair still kinda sucks for animations and stuff, but I I like that Japan just has the, the wherewithal to say, fuck it! <laughs> if your hair clips, it clips. Enjoy your hair. Oh, by the way, my my face might be in the way here. Let me move myself to the left for now while we look at ourselves. There I am. Yeah. There I am. Look, it's me. Hold on, let me pick my own nose. Yeah, there we go. In we go. Pick a winner. Alright, uh, chin. Mouth. I need big kissable lips. Oh, there's some big kissable lips. <laughs> uh, I think this is close to what I got. I don't know. I kind of don't like any of them. I hate them all. We'll go with this. Uh-huh. Oh man, how big would that be? It's pretty big. We'll just stick with that. Whoops. <laughs> uh, yeah, right about there is fine. Big nose. Wide nose. Thin nose. Oops. Some of these nose. I, I wish that I could, like, spin the character as I pleased to take a look at things from, like, a side angle and stuff. Because something that might look fine from the front might look like crap from the side, you know what I mean? Then again, it's not like I have the most control in the universe over the appearance of this character. It's not the best character creator in the universe, but uh, it's, it's, it's fine. Whatever, we'll just leave that there. Hair! What kind of hairstyles do we got? Let's start all the way at the left. We've got our buzz cut. We've got some, we got a short hair. We've got a, a, a like woolly buzz cut. We've got that. We got messy bedhead. We got this horror th show, that horror show. Bald. Slightly okay. Super bald, completely bald. Balding. I'm surprised they have a balding <laughs> style. Oh, the comb over, yes. The widow's peak. The the side shave. A mohawk. This garbage. This garbage, but with some accoutrement on the sides. A fade. Cornrows that look terrible. 
And Mohawk, but with hair. Wow, this hair sucks. All of it sucks. It's all terrible. Which one do I hate the least? Like I said, this is from that generation where hair sucked. <laughs> I could go with this. This is fine. Bedhead is also fine. These are like the only two that I think are okay for the most part. Sure, let's go bedhead. That, that speaks to me. All right, what kind of facial hair? We got clean shaven, mustache, soul patch, smaller soul patch, little goatee, uh, this thingy. I forget what the goatee without the thing there. Five o'clock shadow, handlebar mustache, uh, Sinestro core evil villain. Just a little bit of a little, little everything. That beard, but without the mustache part. And slightly more 5 o'clock shadow. I'll go with slightly more 5 o'clock shadow. No eyebrows. That just looks horrible. Yo, hey, everybody. Don't shave your eyebrows off, please. Please, thank you. I request that you do not shave off your eyebrows. It looks terrible. Uh, None of these eyebrows really speak to me. I think I'll just go with these. These are fine. Hair color. Frosted tips. I don't know, if I was a space wizard, I might personally dye my hair, like, purple or something. Honestly, this is probably as close as it's gonna get to my hair color. <laughs> Yo, if you dye your hair, do you also dye your facial hair so that it matches? Wouldn't that make you look like an insane person, though? Wouldn't it be more normal to look like this than to look like this, right? I don't know, maybe it's just me. <laughs> Scars! Let's take a look at our scar choices. We've got the nothing. One down the cheek. Uh, a little bit on either cheek, across the jawline, across the eye, a couple different spots, the lip, the chin, the nose, uh, maybe that's the forehead, the right cheek, the eyebrow, I kind of like the eyebrow scar. Unless you RP, that's your natural hair color. That's fair, yeah. I kind of like the eyebrow scar. We'll go with that. A nice small one, but small but noticeable. And let's finalize. That's our shepherd. Profile reconstruction complete. We did it. Thor Shepherd. It's me, chat. Now you'll never be able to tell which one's the video game character and which one's the, the webcam character. Yep, let's go. Confirmed. We are going on insanity difficulty. I've never played on insanity before. It'll be fun. <clears throat> level scaling. In classic mode, the original 1 to 60 level range will be used instead of the new 1 to 30. XP and talent point progression remains the same, but the number of levels is doubled. Oh. Okay, so I'll just do legendary mode. That's fine. I don't see any problem with that. Subtitles on, autosave on, tutorials, we'll keep those on because I haven't played Mass Effect in like 12 years or so. Uh, yeah, let's go. Well, what about...
about Shepard. He grew up in the colonies. He knows how tough life can be out there. His parents were killed when slavers attacked Mindwar. He proved himself during the Blitz. Held off enemy forces on the ground until reinforcements arrived. He's the only reason the Lysium is still standing. We can't question his courage. But he doesn't comb he his hair. He's a hero. And Shepard's the best we've got. I'll make the call. Now, I like the thought that my Shepard is way too busy to run a brush through the hair. In the year 2148, explorers on Mars discovered the remains of an ancient spacefaring civilization. In the decades that followed, these mysterious artifacts revealed startling new technologies, enabling travel to the furthest stars. The basis for this incredible technology was a force that controlled the very fabric of space and time. They called it the greatest discovery in human history, the civilizations of the galaxy. Call it... Mass Effect. Good title drop. Good title drop. Again, I'll figure out where to put this webcam here once we take a look at everything. Initiating transmission sequence. Commander? We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. The relay is hot. Acquiring approach vector. All stations secure for transit. Let me just say, the outfit you start with in Mass Effect is so good. Is green. Approach run has begun. That is a sleek, good-looking outfit. So hey, we'll get into reading the lore and stuff about how the Mass Effect works and everything like that. But let me just tell you, the relays are giant railguns that literally shoot you through space. It is the coolest shit. <laughs> it is so cool. Thrusters, check, navigation. How do you travel through space? I get shot by a gun. Mission sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500 K. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. <laughs> Nihilus gave you a How's the volume, everyone? So you hate him. We good? Or should we turn it up? Zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So it's low? Incredible. All right, let me... Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. How's the that? The council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. You always expect the worst. Oh, that's not no what I wanted to select. An occupational hazard. But we don't go anywhere unless there's a good reason, so what are we doing? Ah, uh, man, Jump I was it. just trying to get back in boat. after I alt tapped. Oh, the well. Mass relay, no biggie. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. You're Thank always you. paranoid, Joker. Find the comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the comm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? All right, let me tab back in properly. There we go. He sounds angry. Something must have gone wrong with the mission. <laughs> Captain always sounds like that when he's talking to me. Can't possibly imagine why. It's me. Hello. Yeah, we look very different from default Shepard. You wanna fucking go, Joker? You wanna go? Okay, let's see. Uh, put the gun away. Nope, that's... Nope. How do I put the gun away here? There's our melee. Hold on, I just thought of something. What if I looked at the key bindings? Toggle walk with T, toggle crouch with left control, use or sprint with space bar, map is M, equipment is I, squad is U, journal is J. Wait, why is squad U? Or U squad? I don't know. 
So, quick save F5, quick load F9. Level melee with F, first save with V, grenade with G, holster with H. Okay, H to holster. That makes sense. That makes sense. Ah, okay. So, uh, switching weapons is the F keys, while the quick slots are your abilities and stuff. Okay. Alright, put it away. The captain's waiting for you in the comm room, Commander. Thanks, Seth Green. I'm telling you, I just saw him. He marked by like he was on a mission. With the inspectors, they're always on a mission. Howdy. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? I mean, he wants to see me, right? Wait, 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 wait. I'm on my way to give him a status update right now. With all due respect, sir, maybe he'll finally tell you what we're really doing out here. What do you mean? You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. Tell me more about this Turian Spectre. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. I mean, that was a while ago. That was 30 years ago. You can't blame Nihilus for that. No, I guess not. But it still makes me nervous to have a Spectre on board. You know, you can't Spectre say that, Turian. Shepard. Some of these aliens' We're lifespans alliance, are pretty long. Human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. Do you have a problem with the captain? No, sir. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated special forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. Do you know how many medals Don't that would actually take, like sir? Do <laughs> mission. He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. Do you know how many medals it would take to make a life-size statue of yourself? What do you know about the stealth system? A lot. I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors. Cutting edge technology. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype drive. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper, less chance of security leaks too. Plus there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious this shakedown run is just a cover. A cover, you say? For what? Damned if I know, Commander. We're out here on false pretenses. I'm not a fan of being left in the dark. I'll look into it. I'll see if I can get some answers when I see him. Good luck, Commander. By the way, do I have any Codex things? We do have Codex things! Alright, chat, let's get some lore. Roughly Aliens, Council Reese. years ago, the Turians were invited to join the Citadel Council to fulfill the role of galactic peacekeepers. The Turians have the largest fleet in Citadel space, and they make up the single largest portion of the Council's military forces. As their territory and influence has spread, the Turians have come to rely on the Salarians for military intelligence and the Asari for diplomacy. Despite a somewhat colonial attitude towards the rest of the galaxy, the ruling hierarchy understands they would lose more than they would gain if the other two races were ever removed. Turians come from an autocratic society that values discipline and possesses a strong sense of personal and collective honor. There is lingering animosity between Turians and humans over the First Contact War of 2157, which is known as the Relay 314 incident to the Turians. Officially, however, the two species are allies, and they enjoy civil, if cool, diplomatic relations. So yeah, thing about the Turians is they're, they're the galactic cops, basically. That's, their, that's what their race does. Uh, and as the Galactic Cops, when humans just waltzed into the galaxy and started humaning things up, they're like, what the fuck are you doing here? You're breaking the law. And the humans, not 
having the ability to understand the Turians' language at the time, because no universal translators, were like, Aliens! Get the hell off my lawn! And thus war broke out. Humanity's first contact with an alien race occurred in 2157. At that time, the Alliance allowed survey fleets to activate any dormant mass relays discovered, a practice considered dangerous and irresponsible by Council-aligned races. When a Turian patrol discovered a human fleet attempting to activate a relay, they attacked. One human vessel survived, retreating to the colony of Shanxi. The Turians followed, quickly defeating the local forces. Shanxi was occupied, the first and to date only human world to be conquered by an alien species. The Turians believed the handful of ships they defeated represented the bulk of human defenses, so they were unprepared when the second fleet, under Admiral Castany Drescher, launched a strong counteroffensive, evicting them from Shanxi. The Turians mobilized for full scale war, drawing the attention of the rest of the galaxy. The Council quickly intervened, forcing a truce. Fortunately for humanity, the first contact war was ended with a diplomatic solution. So yeah. Humans broke galactic law. Alien cops say, hey, stop breaking galactic law, we're gonna occupy this space. Humans yell, get off my lawn and cock their gun. <laughs> it sounds exactly like what would happen. The Systems Alliance is an independent supranational government representing the interests of humanity as a whole. The Alliance is responsible for the governance and defense of all extrasolar colonies and stations. The Alliance grew out of the various national space programs as a matter of practicality. Sol's planets had been explored and exploited through piecemeal national efforts. The expense of colonizing entire new solar systems could not be met by any one country. With humans knowing that alien contact was inevitable, there was enough political will to jointly fund an international effort. Still, the Alliance was often disregarded by those on Earth until the first contact war. While the national governments dithered and bickered over who should lead the effort to liberate Shanxi, the Alliance fleet struck decisively. Post-war public approval gave the Alliance the credibility to establish its own parliament and become the galactic face of humanity. And that's who we work for. Uh, I don't know if any of the secondary stuff is voiced. Roughly 1,200 years ago... Yeah, 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 yeah we've... Hold on. All right, we will go over our personal history summary. We were raised on Mindoir on the fringes of the Attican Traverse. When you were 16, the colony was raided by slavers. The entire settlement was raised and your friends and family were slaughtered. A passing Alliance patrol rescued you, but all your love was destroyed. You enlisted with the Alliance military and were posted at Elysium. You were there during the Skylian Blitz, an attack on the colony by a massive coalition force of slavers, crime syndicates, and Batarian warlords. You rallied, the civilian, you rallied the civilian inhabitants, leading them in their desperate fight to hold off the invaders. When the enemy troops broke through the colony's defenses, you single-handedly held them off and sealed the breach. After hours of brutal fighting, reinforcements finally arrived and the enemy broke ranks and fled. Because of your actions, Elysium was saved and you were regarded throughout the Alliance as a true hero. Yay! We did it! Uh... We'll go over the timeline real quick. Some of this secondary stuff, I'll read it if it's interesting, and others I might just ignore. Uh, okay, so 2069, Armstrong Outpost at Shackleton Crater becomes the first human settlement on Luna, that's the moon. It is formally founded on July 24th, the 100th anniversary of the first lunar landing. 2103, Lowell City in Eos Chasma becomes the first human settlement on Mars. 2137, Eldfell Ashland Energy Corporation demonstrates helium-3 fuel extraction from the atmosphere of Saturn. 2142, construction of Gagarin Station, Jump Zero, begins beyond the orbit of Pluto, so we're finally getting outside of our initial solar system. 2148, prospectors discover the Prothean ruins at Promethe Planum on Mars. 2149, translation of Protheum data leads humans to the Charon mass relay. Or, or, Charon? Charon? I don't remember how you say that. Um, 
Systems Alliance founded the coordinates exploration and colonization of extrasolar wars. 2151, a shipping accident in Singapore International Spaceport exposes downwind communities to containers of dust form Element Zero. Alliance begins construction of Arcturus Station. Element Zero is very important. We'll, uh, we'll read more about that later. 2152, roughly 30% of the children born in Singapore after Element Zero exposure suffer from cancerous gro growths. System Alliance begins settlement of Earth's first extrasolar colony war, the planet Demeter. 2154, Commander Shepard is born. Baby Shepherd. 2155 Alliance Systems, or Systems Alliance, I should say, occupies completed portions of Arcturus Station as a headquarters. 2156 Some children of Singapore exhibit minor telekinetic abilities. That's what Element Zero do. 2157 Turians encounter human explorers. First contact war. Occupation and liberation of the human colony of Shanxi. 2158, Herman's humans learn potential of biotics. An international effort to track element zero exposures begins. Roughly 10% of exposed children show some level of biotic abilities. 2160, Systems Alliance Parliament is formed. 2165, humans establish embassy on the Citadel. They really glossed over the uh, the war there. <laughs> 2170, Batarian slavers attack the Alliance colony of Mindwar. 2176, the Skylian Blitz. We become a hero. 2177, Thresher Malls devour the Alliance colony of, Ak of Akuze. 2178, in retaliation for the Skylian Blitz, an Alliance fleet wipes out an army of slavers on the moon of Torfin. Get fucked, slavers. And 2183 is our current year. Which means that Shepard is 30 years old or 29 years old, actually. 29. Jackal, by the way, thank you for the raid. Hello, Jackal Raiders. Nice to see you. All right, let's. Uh... I grew up on Eden Prime, Doc. It's not the kind of place Spectres visit. There's something Nihilus isn't telling us about this mission. Let's talk. What do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Doctor's right. <laughs> ah, heck. Relax, you Jenkins. Calm down, Corporal. Chill, bud. Good soldier stays cool, even under fire. Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Others still blame them for the first contact war. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. I heard Nihilus once took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. Man, I can't believe I'm on a mission with an actual Spectre. This guy's just gushing. He wants some of that Turian dick if they have them. What do you know about the Spectres? Only what I've heard. Spectre agents work directly Which they probably the Citadel do. Council. They, they have something adjacent to a dick, groups. at least. Spectres don't have any official power, though. Basically, they're a shadow organization with a mandate to preserve and protect galactic stability. Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. I am above the law! You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? What's it like? It's very peaceful, Commander. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement. It was gorgeous. But when I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even Paradise gets boring after a while. Why are we heading there? Any idea why Eden Prime was chosen as our destination? Not really sure, Commander. Eden Prime's one of our most stable colonies. Good place to take the Normandy for a shakedown run, I guess. No real danger there. But there's got to be something else going on. We've got a Spectre on board. That's why I'm so wound up. I can't wait for the real mission to start. You'll do fine. Just treat this like every other assignment you've had and everything will work out. Easy for you to say. You proved yourself in the Blitz. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. 
You're young, Corporal. You have a long career ahead of you. Don't do something stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, sir. I'm not gonna screw this up. The captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, Commander. Hey, we got Paragon points. Perfect. So, uh, in case you didn't notice, we're gonna be a Paragon. The reason we're gonna be a Paragon over Renegade is I have played both a Paragon and a Renegade playthrough of Mass Effect uh, uh, across the series, at least Mass Effects 1 and 2. Uh, I never played 3 twice. But, uh, anyway... Uh, there's a couple things that I personally dislike about being a Renegade. Now, Renegade is fun. Don't get me wrong. Renegade has some of the funniest options in it. But Renegade also requires you to make some options that are, quite frankly, stupid. Really, really stupid. In order to be a, a pure-on Renegade, you have to be an idiot sometimes. And I don't, I don't like the decision of being, like, cartoonishly evil and dumb you know can you do a neutral route you can but the problem with doing a neutral route and this is a problem that happens with any of these western games that has this morality system is it's always very black and white um and most of them came from bioware at least any of the good ones um it's not necessarily that they did a bad job of it it's just when you do a neutral route you miss out on a lot of things that either a pure renegade or a pure paragon playthrough gets you when you're pure when you're you're purely one side or the other either the black or the white it's going to allow you more dialogue options that you would otherwise miss sometimes mission opportunities that you would otherwise miss etc etc so being neutral just kind of doesn't work out. I might choose a Renegade option now and again just because it's the better option at the time. But for the most part, we're just going to play Paragon because uh, uh, if I'm being honest, while Renegade is funny at times, it winds up generally losing out on some content that Paragon gets to see. And the big thing is that if you are a, a, a pure renegade, sometimes you're gonna make some of your teammates hate you. Some of your teammates will love you, trust me. Some teammates are like, oh my God, did you just shoot that innocent civilian in the face? I am so hard for you right now. And other teammates are gonna be like, I never wanna speak to you again, how dare you? So in, in the interest of having my teammates like me, because I do like the characters that, that you know, squad up with you in this series, uh, we're gonna be re a, a, a nice paragon person. Anyway, hey, what's up? Nice hip bones there. Commander Shepard. Nihilus. I was hoping you'd get here first. It'll give us a chance to talk. Talk? What about? I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. They say it's a paradise. Yes, a paradise. Serene, tranquil, safe. Uh-huh. Eden Prime has become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? Why are you asking? Do you know something? Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. Oh, what's the name of it? Captain Anderson's voice actor. God damn it. His name was in my head before he showed up, and now it's gone. I was going to say hi. Ah, man. I mean, yeah. I figured there was Keith David, thank you, it. chat. Thank you. We're making a covert. I love Keith David's program. voice. It's really good. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. Okay, why the secrecy? There must be a reason you didn't tell me about this, sir. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the Citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is Big Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. And we joined Eden the Citadel. Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. You sound worried. 
Are we expecting trouble? I'm always expecting trouble. There's more, Shepard. Nihilus isn't just here for the beacon. He's also here to evaluate you. Why? What's going on, Captain? The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. You held off an enemy assault during the Blitz single-handed. You showed not only courage, but also incredible skill. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Wait, you put my name forward? Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. You know what, Nihilus? You're a straight shooter. I like you. I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species. And after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees, galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society. And without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great debt. I like how every race, every single galactic race is like, yeah, the Protheans kind of made all of the space technology that's worth a damn. So, yeah, <laughs> it was all just floating out there and we use it. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology, even yours. If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on Earth. That was just a small data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Wrong hands? Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. The there Batarians. Are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliant ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. The Attican Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low key. All right. Just give the word, Captain. Let's do it. Getting close to Eden. Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Get down! A peaceful farming village. We Look at all that peace. I repeat, heavy casualties! We can't! Get evac! They came out of nowhere! We need- Oh, Yuri Lowenthal died. A peaceful farming no planet. This <laughs> goes dead. There's nothing. Reverse and hold the thirty-eight point five.
Status report. 17 minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more complicated. A small strike team can move quickly, without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. We must get Grab that beacon. And meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Alenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. I want that bacon. Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you're coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. He can count on us. We've got his back, Captain. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck. We are approaching drop point two. All right, tuck and roll when you jump down, boys. Ship perimeter secure, Commander. Okay, first things first. We're gonna go to squad. The squad screen lets you view your team's talents. Mouse over a talent, it's ranked to view it. Click on a talent and spend your talent points to gain a rank at it. As you gain level, you gain talent points and unlock higher ranks. Okay, this is our level up screen. Which is why I waited until we got to this point before we got there. <clears throat> so, uh, right now we've got the ability to gain some extra armor. So the thing is that as an adept, we aren't able to put on any good armor. We only get light armor, which means that this basic armor stuff for damage reduction is going to be quite helpful. Throw is our first basic ability. Throw a mass effect field powerful enough to hurl objects and enemies caught in the area. In effect, out of the way. Each point spent increases the strength of throw, knocking targets further and inflicting greater damage. Warp. Protect a powerful mass effect field that wreaks havoc on a subatomic level, which weakens armor, very important, and inflicts damage over time on enemies. Each point spent increases duration and increases power. And you'll also notice we've got these uh, uh, triangles and circles across the level ups. Triangles increase the power of the ability you're on. Circles will unlock a new ability for you. Um, as you keep putting points into stuff. All right, right now we've got throw and warp. Uh, adept barrier is something we could get, which gives us some extra shielding, which, uh, you know, might be worth getting right now. Adept will increase our biotic resistance and reduce recharge time, uh, which is really important. Reducing recharge time is really good because being able to throw your abilities out a lot is kind of what being an adept is about. You're the mage. And then we have Charm and Intimidate. Charm opens Charm options in conversation, decrease the cost of items in store. Charm options in conversations will be grayed out if you do not have enough skill rank. New skill ranks will unlock when you become a Spectre and as you earn Paragon points. Intimidate opens Intimidate options in conversations, uh, increase credits gained when selling items in stores. Intimidate options in conversations will be grayed out if you do not have blah, 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 blah. So Charm is your uh, Paragon dialogue option and Intimidate is your Renegade dialogue option. So my first three points are actually going to go all into Charm. Because uh, for me, I like dialogue options. I want dialogue options. And we will have some people to talk to in the area. We should be able to get by fine with our base abilities as long as I don't you know, play like crap. <laughs> but I could play like crap. We'll see. Uh, so any time that Charm is available because I'm doing a Paragon playthrough, I'm going to throw points into Charm. Otherwise, we'll start doing our uh, stuff outside of that. We got a couple of points for Caden and a couple of points for Jenkins. So let's uh, throw some points into them. So Caden has throw ability, barrier, decryption. So he's a, a, a sentinel. He, he's a support biotics. And Jenkins is a soldier. So he has access to all kinds of weapons and stuff like that. So uh, as for my teammates, Jenkins will be definitely more useful um, because we need somebody that's willing to run in front of us and take some da and take some damage for us, you know. 
So we're gonna get Jenkins assault rifles. Overkill, allow long bursts of assault rifle file without overheating. Hell yeah. Give him that, and we'll throw him an extra combat armor, I think. Adrenaline burst is really good once you get it, but we can't get it yet, so we'll just get him some uh, some extra armor. There you go, Jenkins. Remember, you got a long career ahead of you. Beep, 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 be good at the... La, 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 I, I, a. Thank you very much, Imagine Touch, for the follow. Cherno, thank you for the fat raid. I fell in love with a girl at a bar? What? What is this? Uh, let's put a point in decryption for Caden here. Uh, first aid Sentinel. Use Biox more efficiently than other classes. Reduce recharge time tech and biotic. Uh, here, have a, have a point in barrier. Boop. Beep, 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 beep. There we go. La, 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 I, I, a. What do we got in our codex? We've got more primary stuff. A robot message, I'm sure, probably. And thank you, Near33, for the follow. All right, let's listen to more lore. 50,000 years ago, the Protheans were the only spacefaring species in the galaxy. Take notes, chat. You're going to be quizzed on this. Swift galactic extinction. Only the legacy of their empire remains. They are believed to have built the mass relays and the citadel, which have allowed numerous species to explore and expand throughout the galaxy. Prothean ruins are found on worlds across the galaxy. While surprisingly intact for their age, functioning examples of Prothean paleotechnology are rare. Time and generations of looters have picked their dead cities and derelict stations clean. Some believe the Protheans meddled in the evolution of younger races. The Hanar homeworld of Kaje, for example, shows clear evidence of former Prothean occupation. I love the, the Hanar. Of a former Prothean observation post on Mars has caused a rebirth of interventionary evolutionists among humans. These individuals believe the god myths of ancient civilizations are misremembered encounters with aliens. Which, considering the Protheans had intergalactic travel down pat, they would seem pretty godlike. Commander, are you sure you should be listening to these codex files in the middle of a of a firing situation? Shut up, Jenkins. I'm Spectres learning. Are I'm luring. from the Office of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance and answer only to the Citadel Council. They are elite military operatives, granted the authority to deal with threats to peace and stability in whatever way they deem necessary. They operate independently or in groups of two or three. Some are empathetic peacekeepers, resolving disputes through diplomacy. Others are cold-blooded assassins, ruthlessly dispatching problem individuals. Explaining All the Paragon versus Renegade options. Or another, often operating outside the bounds of galactic law. The Spectres were founded after the Salarians joined the Council. For many years, they operated in secrecy as backroom problem solvers. Only after the Krogan rebellions did their activities become publicized. Assignment of a Spectre is less contentious than a military deployment, but makes it clear that the Council is concerned about a situation. The Terminus systems are located on the far side of the Attican Traverse, beyond the space administered by the Citadel Council or claimed by the Human Systems Alliance. It is populated by a loose affiliation of minor species, united only in their refusal to acknowledge the political authority of the Council or adhere to the Citadel Conventions. Mm -hmm. Their independence comes at a price. The Terminus is fraught with conflict. War among the various species is common, as governments and dictators constantly rise and fall. The region is a haven for illegal activities, particularly piracy and the slave trade. At Fucking least Batarians. Once a, year, a fleet from the Terminus invades the nearby Attican Traverse. These attacks are typically small raids against poorly defended colonies. Like our home. The Council world. rarely retaliates, as sending patrols into the Terminus systems could unify the disparate species against their common foe, triggering a long and costly war. And there we go. There's our codex updated. And Journal is just 
what we're doing, our mission summary and stuff like that, our assignments, all that stuff. We'll be popping into this when we get sub-quests, side-quests, all that kind of stuff to pay attention to. And there we go. That's a prologue pretty much officially done. It's time to get into our first mission.